Jacob, uh, we're fantastic. So we want to get into the emotions that Josh Heupel was feeling last week. But let's start with this. Just your thoughts on the way Tennessee won that football game because – I said it, I think, in before we went to break. I believe more in Josh Heupel being a championship coach than I did on Friday, and I already believed it on Friday. Yeah, sure. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, honestly, I think the way they won the game was good defense. I think that, man, just the ability to <clears throat> shut down the run game, right? I believe OU had 36 rushing yards on a lot of attempts, right? And, and – um, you know, for those front seven guys, man, that's crucial, right? That's the biggest, the biggest thing in this league in the SEC is being able to run the ball, being able to stop the run. So I think you start there, and then obviously you have some some great plays in the secondary. Um, you have some great secondary players, right, that we've added to this roster, and that you know we we lost a lot of guys in the back end, and I think that was a big point of uh, you know of worry for a lot of people. I think is how how those guys were gonna just hang you know, hang in there against SEC competition or whatever it may be. And man, they did a great job this weekend. Um, the D line did great. Linebackers did great. Um, I was super happy to see just kind of how, you know, the defense performed and the offense too. But specifically, I think the reason that we won that game was because the defense was able to, you know, get the offensive guys kind of going, you know I mean? Keep them in it early. Obviously there was, you know, kind of this lull, this weird kind of slow start that, both teams had offensively um, and it was because both defenses came to play. So, um, you know, I think that was, that was the key to success for, for us, you know, this past weekend. Okay. I want to get your perspective as a player that still mm -hmm. talks to a, a former player of VFL that <clears throat> also talks to a lot of current players. I'm sure it's not like you cut off yeah. all ties when you <laughs> right. graduate. Um, Jacob, how big do you think this was for Tennessee's players to win it for Josh Heupel? Now, Cooper Mays wasn't even aware last week um, that Josh Heupel had been fired by Oklahoma, but I'm sure as the yeah. week progressed, everybody knew. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, you have these games where, uh, you know, you come in Monday and you're like, all right, guys, this one – this was personal. You know what I mean? I think that that's the key word. That's the buzzword is, is personal. Right. And so everything in this game is personal and whether people tell you it is or isn't everything, in this game is personal. Right. But um, with a game like that, you know what I mean? I think it, it's, it comes up a lot too when we play, you know, teams like Missouri or teams, you know, just like these other spots that our coaches, a lot of our coaching staff has, has spent time and, you know, they still know a lot of the people there. Obviously coach hype had a lot of ties and relations to, the actual coaches, you know, at OU with Venables and, and um, with their offensive coordinator and just a bunch of different people. And, you know, obviously I, I try to put myself in his shoes, you know what I'm saying? And, and say, okay, if I was, you know, if I was in his position, right. And I say I was coaching wherever, right. And, and, and or say I was coaching at Tennessee, right. And Tennessee, you know, lets me go, whatever, for whatever reason. And I end up coming back to Neyland stadium. How would I feel? walking into Neyland Stadium. You know what I'm saying? After after all the, the history, all the experience, whatever, all the great, all the bad, you know what I mean? Just whatever it may be, how, how would I feel? And, and I feel for him, man, because I can only imagine the emotional just roller coaster he's been through all week. And um, he explained it a little bit. And I think that's that's Hype's way of, of getting emotional is <laughs> kind of, you know what I mean? He, he slows down a little bit. And, and you could tell just in, in the look of his eyes that, yeah, what he the words he's saying are, are one thing. He's saying it's not about him, which it's not. And it, and it won't be. It never will be. And I think he wants it that, to be that way. But, um, you know, he says those words. But you could tell, you know, in the back of his head 100 percent that that meant the world to him. So that's that's very that's very good. Okay, I, I want to ask you, too, <clears throat> why Josh Heupel didn't make more of it leading into the week. I think I know the answer, but I want to get yeah, your you know the answer. Oh yeah, but yeah. I want to get I want to yeah. get your thoughts. And let's pull up that clip that we were going to play, Caleb. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and it's brought to you by <clears throat> Peak IV Hydration, South Knoxville and Sevierville. Wide range of IV treatments. Like I said earlier, support our sponsors. That's why we're here. Peak IV Hydration. Over a hundred five star reviews, and you can order online too. The patches, Jacob, that will absolutely uh, take care of those that might have some sort of vitamin deficiency or that. Uh, 
maybe rocked it a little bit too hard at the Morgan Wallen concert. Hmm. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. We'll hear that. All right, let's go ahead and play this clip now from Josh Heupel. It's emotional, and I just want to ask Jacob what it means to him to see this. This thing coming back to normal was never about me. It was not. That's exactly what I'm talking about right there. But <laughs> when he stops like that, I appreciate <laughs> you all. Having a little extra for me. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. and that's him, man. He really, he really means that. And like I gotta tell you, man, you can just see it in his eyes. And everybody, it'll kind of be rowdy, rowdy, whatever. And he starts talking, and and you know, he starts to feel feel emotion or whatever, and starts kind of trying to get his point across like that. That place just goes silent, man. And and he's got that room. You know what I mean? just wrapped around his finger, dude. Like he's, and I think, you know, you love seeing stuff like that as a player because it's been so just the journey has been so tough and, and, you know, he's hard on the guys for sure. You know what I'm saying? But he does a good job of slowing down and showing guys that, that he cares about, about what he's doing. You know what I mean? And that he cares about the players and, and that's him sincerely thanking, thanking the players. You know what I'm saying? Like he knows, He's humble. He knows exactly the dynamic and, and things wouldn't go without the guys. Right. But things also would go without him. So that's uh, yeah, awesome to see. It's really Jacob, cool. um, I know a couple of years ago and uh, I, I'm, I'm probably and I don't expect to because I, if I were a player, I wouldn't give one. So I don't expect a straight answer from you on this. But I I, I, yeah. I know that when you guys played Missouri, it felt like Josh Hyper wanted to punch one in at the very end because they didn't hire him <laughs> as head coach. Yeah. Um, he played it a little bit differently this time, which was, I'm just trying to get out of here with the win and I'm not going to humiliate OU. If the situation were different and you think he had a chance though, do you, th- without the tackle situation, wanted to keep Nico healthy, do you think there's a chance he would have tried to punch an extra one in, in the fourth quarter? <laughs> you know, I think, I think the goal of the game is to win by as many as you can. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you win by one or if you win by a hundred, right? It doesn't matter. You win. But you know, obviously, I can't make that call. I don't know. Maybe he would have. Maybe he wouldn't have. But, um, you know, I, I I heard you guys talking about this earlier. And I, I may be assuming, but I think this is what you're talking about when you say this kind of solidifies that hype is is a championship coach and, and this team could be a championship team. And, and just the way that, you know, he obviously made a conscious decision to say we are going to control this game with our offense, we are going to control this game with our defense. Yes, you might get the ball back here. We're bend, don't break, man. If we get you the ball, like they got almost every single time that they turn, we turn the ball over to them, we got the ball right back, right? So, you know, these momentum shifts and everything like that, like the way that Hype was able to control the game, just with play call, with tempo, with 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 poise and just everything and understanding the clock, understanding, you know, okay, it might be better to do this here and, and just everything, man. Watching the game was, he, he did a great job and the guys did a great job of executing. And um, I think when it comes down to it, you for sure might want to punch one more in, but end of the day is like, dude, like, let's just, let's be happy with, with the win and, and let's just, you know, move on, get back on that plane and, and head back to Knoxville. As someone who's still affiliated with the program, um, you know, I know, I know it meant a lot to Heifel, but how much do you think he established a culture where I know Amari Thomas said last week, we're not here to win this for Heifel, we're here to win this for Tennessee because that's a culture yeah. he instilled. But do you think yeah. with the players there was a little bit just independently of, guys, we got to do this for hype because 100%. 100%. Yeah, that'll be any week that you go into. Like I'm talking, you have these talks of this, you know, they give you the background of, okay, hype played there, you know, hype coach there. You know, some things went down, whatever. Hype no longer is coaching there. You know, like his whole like you you as you start to kind of feel it out and you start to kind of understand the the magnitude of the situation, then you'd for sure start maybe putting a little bit extra in. You, you know, maybe stay thirty extra minutes and watch more film, or you know, out there on the field, you feel like you can't go no more, man. Like it's time to just you just nut up and you just go do it. So, um, I think the guys are motivated to do that without it being one of those games like Oklahoma or Missouri, but. Um, it for sure shows up at a time time like that. Set our poll question up, and then I'm going to ask Jacob 
uh, the the poll question. Uh, Caleb, I've got it up there now. Um, go ahead and throw that out if you don't mind. All right. So the poll question is, uh, what is better, winning with a great offense, winning with a smothering defense? And our fans are very old school. That's what we're seeing. Um, By old school, you mean they all said defense, huh? Yeah. So we're ninety percent yeah, defense. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Wait, I don't know, dude. Jacob, I don't I, know. I, let me let me throw this at you because I did a little bit of research, and I know yeah. that I know that Alabama switched to a more up tempo style after winning championships, old yeah. school ball control, but they still controlled the ball and yeah. they had a great defense. Um, 2019 LSU had a special offense, but they were still a top 30 defense. I would argue that you're much more likely to win a championship with a great defense than a great Mm -hmm. offense. A great offense, in my opinion, means you're TCU and you get in, but then you get blasted by Georgia. What I was about to say, a great offense will flash and will get you where you want to be, but I feel like it's hard it's hard to have a great offense and a not so good defense. I think if you have a good defense, a solid defense that can get third down stops, can keep people out of their red area, can, you know, maybe once or twice a game, stop someone in their own red area, force field goals. I think that's when you can really be, that's when you really see good offenses really excel because they can put up, like I, it reminds me of uh I'm not saying our defense was bad at all, but I'm just saying we scored most points per year. What was it? Was it 2022 or was it? Yes. I'll say it. Your defense was bad. I'm not, I didn't say that. <laughs> I know. I did not say that. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being hard on any of those players, Jacob. For it's sure. just the roster was just left in a mess by Jeremy Pruitt. And that's exactly what I want to say is that it has nothing to do with the players. We had so much talent on that team and, you know, everything – has come together now, right? That wasn't a part, a point of the program where things were still coming together. But our offense was very, very high power, high tempo, scored a lot of points. That won us a lot of games. And you're in a game with Kentucky. I remember we, Kentucky didn't punt the ball a single time, and we won the game. What forty two to forty five? Yes, and we I scored. That. You know what I'm saying? We scored forty five points. They didn't punt once, and we won the game with like that's that's so unheard of and like i don't know for a team to score 42 points and not punt and then lose is pretty crazy and that just shows you the power of, of a great offense and the ability to just move the ball down the field throw deep shots score a lot of points but again you could say if our defense is super stout you, you wouldn't have to score 45 points right you would only have to score whatever so they they truly man it's a game where they truly go hand in hand and you cannot you can't be good without one or the other and you can't be great without good both sides of the ball and, and uh, yeah the whole chat saying defense wins championships uh all that stuff which i completely agree with okay yeah. cool I'm which i completely agree crazy. with right yeah i'm gonna throw some crazy numbers at you but uh first th- these are numbers where tennessee ranks in the nation nation in defense first tell us about our friends at peak ib hydration that they, they do great work jacob Man, offense, defense doesn't matter, man. They, <laughs> which whatever you're trying to do, man. If you're trying to protect yourself, you're trying to go get, you know, maybe get rowdy on the weekend, whatever. Um, they take care of, man. They take care of, of people. Um, you know, just the people in the shop are great, man. They always, you know, doing everything by the book. You know, what I mean, making sure they're they're being safe, they're being clean, they're being, you know, trying to protect you as a as a consumer and. Um, like, like we've said, man, I've used it in my playing days and, and I've used it just on days where, you know, say you're going to the, the water park or, you know, I mean, you're going to the music. We go to Dollywood all the time, right up the street. Right. Um, shout out Dollywood. But like, say you're just going to, you know, you just want to feel good. You want to, you know, a little boost of energy, whatever you can throw the patch on, go get, you know, go get IV, whatever it is, man. Um, they always take care and and truly have, have seen an impact in my life and, and it's kind of helped me feel good, you know, feel my best. So shout out peak hydration, peak IV hydration.com. You can order the patches online. I did. So they, they gave me one to wear and it was uh, awesome. And that day I felt fantastic. And I will be back in. Here's some numbers that I think will blow you away. Um, and Jacob, I don't know how much 
research you do into this, but like one of my favorite things to do is uh, the day after a Saturday full of games to check where everybody yeah. ranks statistically, especially yeah. at this point in the season because everybody's played somebody for the most sure. part. For the most maybe part, not, right. maybe not all this, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the uh, um, Tim Banks' defense, yeah, number one in mm -hmm. total defense in the nation. In the nation, number right. two against Russia, uh, a rushing defense in the nation. Number two in the nation in third down efficiency, stopping the other team on third down. Four straight games under 75 rushing yards, two TDs allowed in the last 20 quarters, one pass play of 30-plus yards allowed all year. Yeah. I'm going to ask you a tough question. <laughs> you ready? Okay. All right. This Tennessee team is better suited to win a national championship than 2022 in which you guys, before the Hendon Hooker injury and whatever happened at yeah. South Carolina, I don't need to get in the weeds there, but sure. before that, you guys were probably going to be in the college football playoff. Right. I think this team would have a better chance to win a national championship. Am I wrong? Um, one, I'm not on this team, so I don't know, but I, I do think, man, I, I, cause I think of it like, okay, if the two teams were to play each other, right. Ooh. If this year's team were to play that year's team, you know, who, who do I think would win? Right. I think, you know, you got to go down the line, right. Offense. I think that team had an extremely, extremely talented, gifted experienced quarterback you know what i mean it was coming to you know his what second year in the program right so now he's coming back and and he truly man knows exactly who he is know exactly what the team is everything like that so um obviously that's a plus but now you have this also extremely talented young quarterback that has so much energy and so much just charisma and just composure and and the poise and everything that he plays with is spectacular Right. Obviously, we just talked about that defense. And, <laughs> um, you know, it's a defense truly, truly that I in 2022 probably would not wanted to see. Right. I would not have wanted to deal with James Pierce. I would not have wanted to deal with Keenan Peely. I would not wanted to have to deal with, you know, Big O when he lines up in a three technique or any five technique. You know, what I mean, like there's a lot of guys right now that I'm like, yeah, I, <laughs> these guys are like these are real, real dudes that are 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 known around the nation for being just dominant on defense and and hype said it last week the best man tennessee is known for it um dude i don't know i know i'm, I'm giving you a roundabout here i don't know man who knows who knows man but we'll see i think they have a chance man i think they always have a chance and i think that um you know it, it's just gonna i think fall fans and myself and just everybody that's around tennessee football gets so 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 excited and their expectations just get sent through the roof every single year and that's amazing it's great i think that it's perfect i think that that's exactly what the team needs because i've said it on this show with you before dave like nobody wants to win i promise you no fan no anybody wants to win more than the people in that room then it'll never be that way no one will ever want to win more than the players so if they have a lot of people that really, really want to win and really want to see them succeed behind them, man, I think that's just going to be the biggest thing is just continuing to support those guys. And, and dude, if they drop a game, like, not the end of the world. You know what I'm saying? Especially now with 12 team, like, like everything will shake out. Everything will be just fine. Let's just kind of watch these guys progress and just hope that they can continue to, to grow through their, their SEC schedule because, I mean, this is really – we think about it. This this determines everything right now. It's not it's not determined in December or in January. It's determined right now. Like what can you do in these early games? Can you show the nation that you're you're worthy of being on this platform? And, and what are we what are we even ranked right now? Is it six still? Uh, no, no, they're, they're move up to fifth and the one that matters, the AP, the coaches. They moved up to fifth. Yeah, I mean, I I love um, sports information directors. Actually, I don't, but. Um, they, they, I think, vote for the coaches in, in some cases. So I don't really take the coaches into consideration. Sure. sure. But, man, either way, let's just enjoy it, man. I'm so happy for my guys that are still on the team. Um, 
of course, they're starting to think playoff, 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 whatever. Um, but, the, you know, they also know everybody in that building knows, man, you got to take it one week at a time and you got to just that's what we're here to do. Right. We're talk, We're here to talk about the future. We're here to talk about, you know, the the things that we can't even, you know, touch or control. But but, you know, it's just on them to go out there and just week by week, man, just put in the work to to, to go do it. Two, uh, two things before we let Jake. Oh, do you get, you got something else? Okay. Yeah, Jacob, I, I want to ask an elephant in the room a little bit because we're talking about the defense and all of these things. But, um, yeah. you know, all the excitement was about Nico Iamaliava entering the year and his numbers, while highly efficient, were somewhat pedestrian. I don't think that's anything to be concerned about. Dave doesn't think that's anything to be concerned about. I want to know your thoughts. Yeah. I think that was just the flow of the game and what they asked him to do on Saturday, right? I agree. I mean, you watch – I think that numbers are so just – they're just lofty, right? They're hard to kind of pinpoint exactly where they came from. It's hard to be like, okay, well, he only he only threw for, what, 190, 190 some yards, right? And you can say only, right? But there's a certain point I can remember not too long ago when 200, you know, throw passing yards was good. You know what I'm saying? And that was very, very impressive for the quarterback play or whatever it was. <laughs> I can sp personally remember a time when that was the case, right? And so I think I got the numbers here. I think 194 pass and 150 rushing. Like you have two solid numbers, like and and that ball is touching that kid's hands every single play, man. And 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 when I talk about the control of the game that hype was able to to instill, I'm talking about offense too. Like the I remember the drive going into into the half. We didn't end the ball. It didn't end the half with the ball, but I think we ended up scoring with like a minute and 30 seconds, maybe a minute, 40 seconds. Like that drive started with six minutes or so in the clock. Like this offense, man, if this offense goes three and out on tempo, that's about 40, 45 seconds off the clock. So the ability for a quarterback who, who plays high tempo the whole entire game, all of his career, whatever, that's what we drill all the time. The ability to run a little four minute situation, control the clock, hand the ball off, trust running backs, trust the O line, make a little, you know, a little, you know, dink throw here, there, whatever, and just trust the process, man. Understand that he doesn't have to try to air the ball at every play to go, you know, go touch that 250 or 250 passing, 300 passing, whatever. I think it's good almost to see that he's not throwing for 200, 300 yards every single game because that shows he's able to. Not take a step back at all, but he's able to see the bigger picture. He's able to understand it's not about him. You know what I'm saying? At all. The same way it's not about hype, it's not about Nico. And I think that that's almost a harder conversation to have for a young quarterback than you really want it to be. But he's doing a great job. And I will continue to support him if he throws for 194 yards or 20 yards. It doesn't matter, man. If we're winning games and – you know what I'm saying? Everybody is 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 competing hard and, and going out there to do everything they can. And that's all that he does, then that's amazing. Yeah, Caleb, off the top of my head, I think he was was it twelve of twenty one? Does that sound right? No, it's thirteen of twenty one. Thirteen, 13 of twenty one. Well, at least four yeah. of those were purposeful throwaways. So I mean, I I thought he was incredibly efficient, especially for a yeah. redshirt freshman. What he did. I got good news and bad news uh, for you headed out the door, Jacob. Are you ready for this? You want the good yeah, or the go bad ahead. first? Give me the bad first, always. Oh, the bad first, always. Okay. That's very mature yeah. of this young man. All right. Who would win on our poll question? Ooh, the 24 teams got you 81% to the 2022 team. Dang. But, <laughs> Come on. Where's yeah, the poll? I mean, Hold on. I can't even see it. Yeah, do you have it on? Do you have it only on your screen? Where's the poll? No, it's on our, it's on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube oh, channel. crap! So, um, I'm gonna just go vote a bunch of times for 2020. 2020. Right. Uh, but however, there's this. Uh, if I can find it, look at this comment, which we probably will get each and every week because you're such a great dude. And Tony says, Jacob, as a ball fan for 62 years, I really appreciate what you did at Tennessee. You're a great VFL, and I agree. Thank you, sir. Tony, I appreciate it. Um, man, yeah, it's great to hear. Um, I see people around town and stuff, and some people just say, hey, man, but some people truly, you know, have nice words to say. So I, I, I very much appreciate you saying that, Tony. Jacob, uh, and also I will say, I don't think any tight end from this team could win a fight against Jacob Warren. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That's what matters, baby. Come on. <laughs> it's all about me. It's all about me. <laughs> Jacob, have a blessed day and awesome. a, uh, yeah. a fantastic week. We'll talk to you.
All right, I'm gonna go play some golf. Y'all take care. <laughs>